the first full movement that happens in this, which is the basic arch and curl. So once again, your knees are bent and feet flat on the floor. And just notice how you come to into this position, what's your sense of yourself, your sense of contact with the floor. And then let's try, first of all, going into the arch. And so I'm going to describe the ways you can come into it through your lower body, first of all. And so, first of all, you might notice that if you just lighten your feet on the floor, that it starts to create a pulling into your lower back and a bit of a rotating um, of your, your pelvis as your back arches. And then that tightening up your spine goes up into the neck. So there'll be a bit of a tilting backward with your head as the arching goes into your neck. And then you might experiment with what happens if you allow your arms to turn outward. So there's an external rotation in your arms. And as you go into that, potentially, and it may not be you in this moment, but potentially it could go as far as the pressure being mostly on just your head and your pelvis. So you really can get a full arching and perhaps a lifting of your shoulder blades off the ground, but only if it wants to do that. You really want to follow the sense of ease. Otherwise, you stop at the upper end. Always you stop at the upper end of your movement where you start feeling pushback or effort and hang out there and soak in the sensations of it so that as you drop back off it, you can feel that letting down. So now as you go into the curl part of it, you start to get a flattening of your lower back on the floor, which is enhanced by a slight pressing of your feet. And then as that lengthens up through your spine, you may find that there's a lengthening up through the back of your spine, which goes back into the back of your head. And you may find that it's just, your head just wants to come up off the floor as your pelvis is also kind of releasing its pressure on the floor so that you feel like a slinky that's just kind of lengthening as it also starts to curve and your hands, your arms turn inward as far as they want to go. And so all of that is enhanced by that. And again, just as far as it wants to go with ease. An alternative to that is as you come back down to resting is let's just come revisit that again for a moment is to bring your hands together, cupping the back of your neck or even the back of your skull, that first place where the skull meets the, the neck or the occipital area, so that as you come up, you're either taking the head and the hands as a unit. So you're not actually lifting your head, but you're feeling how the arms and the head can come up as a unit as you go into the curl. Or alternatively, if you really feel that your neck doesn't know how to lengthen, is just gently stroking with your fingers along the back of your neck to give them that sensory feel of what lengthening can be like. And then just letting all of that come back down, allowing yourself to soak in the sensations for a moment of the resting place, and then going back into the arch. Now, as you go into this, some people find it easier to start the movement with your head, first of all. So I typically describe it from the foot the up, but you might find that you find it works really well for you to let your head go back, let the arching start in your neck, your arms start to rotate outward, and then slowly feeling that arching going down your back, into your lower back and then feeling how the pelvis starts to rotate and really getting the arch initiating from top down. So it's worthwhile exploring both ways and then just coming back down to your resting point. So that's the arch and curl. How often is it useful to do these things? I find that often doing any one of these three times. So there's kind of like the first time is kind of an awakening. The second time is your body starting to make sense of it. And then the third time is kind of the integration. It starts to kind of feel like it's starting to really um, move to a different place. 
is often like a minimum that is really useful. And so sometimes I'll do a little less as I'm uh, demonstrating this today and sometimes a little bit more and we'll just kind of know that that's kind of a, a, a good sweet spot to start with. And then Hannah said anything up to 10 times um, but you find what works for you in your own practice.